What are you doing? What the f does it look like I'm doing, dumb? F Get the f over before you find out. Stop pretending you're a police officer. Listen, m I know what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do. What you need to do is figure it the f out before you start talking. Are you listening to me? Listen. Are you listening to me? Listen. I'm a deputy. I'm not an officer. You don't tell me what to do. Being a police officer is a noble and dangerous profession that requires courage, integrity, and training. But some people think they can just put on a costume and play a cop without any of the responsibilities or consequences. They harass, scam, or harm innocent people under the pretext of being police officers until their act backfires, and they end up facing the real cops who are not amused by their deception. In this video, we'll share some of the most shocking cases of cop impersonators who got busted by the real cops. Number 1. Jeremy DeWitt Jeremy DeWitt is a former funeral procession escort and convicted predator who was so obsessed with the idea of being a police officer that he had been jailed multiple times for repeatedly impersonating police officers. Mr. DeWitt, you're here today because you're arrested on uh, an arrest warrant for uh, a sex offender uh, violation failing to register as required. Uh, you're also out on bond on five charges of falsely uh, impersonating an officer. In 2009, DeWitt founded Metro State Vehicle Protection Services, a legitimate company that provides vehicle escorts to funeral processions. I'll get the light before the bridge, you get the light after the bridge. However, DeWitt did not exactly act like an ordinary escort. He kitted like a police officer with uniforms, badges, helmets, and bulletproof vests. The motorcycles and cars he drove were equipped with sirens, lights, and decals that looked like official law enforcement vehicles. DeWitt runs a company that provides private security escorts during funeral processions. DeWitt behaved aggressively and recklessly on the roads while speedily weaving through traffic. It's still 110 down this road. Locking intersections, running red lights, directing traffic. Go past me! Go past me! Repo, take this intersection and keep this under control. Yelling profanities and threats at other drivers. What are you doing? What the f does it look like I'm doing, dumb? F Get the f over before you find out. Stop pretending you're a police officer. Listen, m I know what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do. What you need to do is figure it the f out before you start talking. S and worst of all, pulling other civilian drivers over on the road. Hey, pull over, pull over. He acted as if he was above the law. In fact, he acted like he owned the law because even real police officers never exhibited such an abysmal level of arrogance and pride. DeWitt was able to operate for years without facing any serious consequences because he exploited a legal loophole in Florida that allowed funeral escorts to use flashing amber lights and direct traffic. But in 2019, DeWitt was arrested after a real officer saw him run a traffic light while working a funeral. On the officer's request, DeWitt handed over his motorcycle registration, but upon running it, the information came up as stolen and that was when the real problem started for the wannabe police officer. Sergeant, my vehicle's not stolen, Sergeant. I can tell you right now, everything's being videotaped on my body cam, Sergeant. Okay, you're, you're so, you're I have the registration for the vehicle, Sergeant. While DeWitt loudly tries to explain himself. Because the Honda was stolen, and we got the tag back from the Orange County Sheriff's Office, and then we registered it to that the officers searched him to find a variety of police gear including a handcuff, a baton, mace, and several other police equipment. It was at this moment that the officer decided to throw him in the back of their patrol vehicle and take him away. You just chill. If it's, a, if it's an issue, oh, we'll, we'll figure it out. But you screaming and yelling isn't going to change that. Okay. Well, just sit tight. Okay. Following his arrest, DeWitt was charged with impersonating an officer, but he was shortly released on bond before his trial. However, just a few weeks after his release, the police secured a fresh warrant for DeWitt's body camera. And when they searched his camera footage, they found several other implicating videos of DeWitt pulling over other civilian drivers. Get the f over! And several other violent confrontations with road users whom he felt were getting in his way while on his funeral escort job. You must have missed that it's 45 through there, and then you use the turning lane to cut through traffic. I understand you're in a nice car and everything, but let's be a little nice more car. mature the way you drive. Let's nice drive car. the right way there. Are you a cop? Don't worry about what I am, because oh, no. I'm a state agent, so yeah, well, what you need not. to do is make sure you're doing the right thing, boy. The driver who probably knew that this guy could be anything but a police officer, decided to ignore him and drive on. But DeWitt caught up with him just a few poles away and continued his rant. Yeah. That's real nice. Yeah, I know. The way you almost hit me, boy, oh, yeah, is the way it's professional, you're ass. You're not a cop. You want to fight? Violate the rules too. How's that? Even act like you're 
stopping me. I didn't pull you over. With the new evidence against him, DeWitt was arrested again and charged with impersonating a police officer. You were arrested pursuant to a probable cause warrant for falsely impersonating uh, an officer. But again, he was released on bond. About Thank you, cases. Your Honor. After being given two chances, one would expect DeWitt to stay out of trouble and do his business in adherence to the provisions of the law. But that was not what DeWitt did, because in 2021, he appeared before the court again on charges of concealing a weapon. This court appearance was following his arrest by officers from the Orange County Sheriff's Office, who were now very familiar with him because of his constant run-ins with them. Not him again. Jeremy. On this day, DeWitt was stopped by a deputy and his men who saw him riding with one of his staff while carrying what looked like a firearm. Don't reach for that firearm! Walk away from your bike! Keep your hands up! Keep your hands up! Go down to your knees! Do not reach for that firearm! You're being secure because you're openly carrying a firearm. Following his arrest, DeWitt was taken into police custody on charges of carrying a concealed weapon. But when the deputy took a closer look at the supposed firearm DeWitt was carrying, he found out that it was an unloaded pepper ball, which is a non-lethal firearm when used properly. So the charges against DeWitt were dropped and he was free to go home. Wherever you want to go. Do you need a ride? <laughs> Where can I take you? Isn't it amazing how nice you guys are when you screw up? <laughs> Thank you. Let's go. While DeWitta was set free to go, his bond at the time was revoked, and he was soon summoned before the court to tell his own side of the story. I was on bond. They revoked my bond with a new charge, but that charge was dropped. He has approximately 10 or 11 other cases that he's currently first. Oh, you got a bunch of different cases that are keeping you. Right. However, the judge restored his bond, but when his case went on trial in September 2021, he was sentenced to 18 months in prison and four years of probation. His driving license was also suspended for six months. He was released from jail around August 2022, but being a chronic offender, DeWitt was rearrested again on November 29, 2022, by Osceola County Sheriff's Department for violating his probation conditions. Number 2. Casey Donovan Williams on April 8, 2021, Whitehall police officers were dispatched to the area of Collingwood Avenue and East Broad Street after they received a report about a man impersonating a police officer. When they arrived, they found an unmarked police vehicle that belonged to a man named Williams, who was kitted like a full police officer. When the officers confronted the stranger, Williams told the officers that he was an off-duty officer working for Watchman Security Company. Hi there. So, you're an actual Cleveland police officer? No, no, I'm not with Cleveland PD. I work for uh, Cleveland Watchmen. We're a security company that hires only off-duty police officers to do traffic control. For, uh, Are you an off-duty police officer? Yeah. Yes. And that he worked for the Glenmont Police Department and the Pickaway County Sheriff's Office. So, who are you with? Uh, Pickaway Sheriff's Office. Pickaway? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Are you full-time over in Pickaway? Uh, I live in Pickaway, so... Um, so I left the sheriff's office area. But in just a moment, Williams changes his story and admits that he no longer works for the Pickaway County Sheriff's Office, but still has their badge. So you're not even a police officer. What was that badge you were displaying earlier? That's my old Pickaway one. So you have a Pickaway County badge, but you don't work for them? It's a previous one from there, yeah. All right. Yeah. You have that with you currently? Yeah, the last badge. Can I see that, please? Williams hands over the badge to the officer, but as you can already tell, that badge is as fake as its owner. Here, tell me what's wrong with it. It's plastic. Yeah, that's what he was displaying. And he's armed and everything. Once his first set of lies was bursted, Williams went on to claim that he works as a village police officer for a nearby county. Have you ever been sworn in by them? I have spoke with the chief. That's not what I'm asking okay. you. I'm asking you one question. Are you a commissioned police officer through the state of Ohio? I have an OPUTA certificate. That's not what That's I'm asking. That's not what I'm asking I'm you. But this was a lie too, and Williams got bursted once again. I'm explaining to you. I have no, 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 you're not. You're not answering the question. You're avoiding the question. It's very simple. Are you a sworn police officer anywhere in the that state of Ohio with any department? Not currently. Okay. It was then that the officers decided to get across to local authorities, including both the Glenmont Police Department and the Pickaway County Sheriff's Office, but they found out that Williams was not employed by either of them. They also learned that there was no special duty assignment for the area where Williams was found posing as a police officer. With this new information, the officers proceeded to search Williams' car, and in the trunk, they found a loaded rifle, a ballistic vest, and a Pickaway County Sheriff's Office coat. All right. And it's loaded, right? Okay. Take all his stuff, and you can throw it in my car. Okay. I'll put it in the back of yours. With enough seen and heard, the officers informed Williams that he would be detained and charged accordingly. I'm asking you for courtesy, man-to-man, -man, please 
Do well, not ruin my career. Please, please, please. But the officers paid no heed to his pleas. You're out here acting in a law enforcement capacity, displaying a badge that you have no right to have, or a facsimile of a badge. That's not even a real badge. Yeah. You were aware of that, yeah, okay? It's, it's not real. Okay, so you're going to be charged. Oh, seriously? Yes, seriously. He was disarmed in all the police gear he was parading, including a full-duty belt with a loaded handgun, a taser, two pairs of handcuffs, pepper spray, and a flashlight were all confiscated. Yep, right here. Right here. Right. Okay. Take off the belt, and then I'm going to search. Okay. You don't have anything else on you, do you? No. All right. Just no, no, no. Just don't don't reach in. All right. You, you yeah. should know the drill. Williams was arrested and charged with felonies of impersonating an officer and improper handling of a firearm in a motor vehicle. However, when he appeared before the court, the prosecution made some surprising revelations to the judge. Revelations that would then lead to a new twist in the case. Just so you understand what's going on, there is a question, even as we sit here today, whether under the law he is a peace officer. It appears that when he stopped his prior employment, they never decertified him. As it turned out, Williams had actually worked as a corrections deputy in Pickaway County, Ohio. He resigned from his position in September 2020 after he portrayed himself as an on-duty deputy during a state fair when he was not scheduled to work. But after he left the police force, he was not officially decommissioned, so technically, he's still an officer in a way. So the court offered him a deal to plead guilty to attempted improper handling of a firearm while they dropped the impersonation charges. We had a big long conversation about how to do this. The parties were in agreement that this was the best way to resolve it today. In the end, Williams got away with a slap on the wrist as a warning and a misdemeanor conviction on his record. Accordingly, I'll order the defense to serve three days in a local jail, credit him with three days already served, order the firearms, the Black 19 and the Smith & Wesson rifle to be confiscated and destroyed. The court will waive fines and costs and consider the case closed. Number three, Brendan Wasinski. Brendan Wazinski is an 18-year-old boy from Albuquerque, New Mexico, who tried to pull over a driver while impersonating a sheriff's deputy, but ended up being caught by an actual police officer. Brendan had a fascination with law enforcement, but he didn't have the qualifications or the training to become a real cop, so he decided to take matters into his own hands and buy a fake sheriff's badge online, along with some other equipment that he thought would make him look more authentic. He also installed a siren speaker system, a red and white LED light bar, and a police scanner in his car, which was an unmarked white Ford Taurus. He then proceeded to drive around the city, looking for unsuspecting drivers to pull over. On the night of September 9, 2019, he spotted a car that he claimed was going 120 miles per hour on the interstate. He immediately activated his lights and sirens and followed the car until it stopped on the side of the road. He got out of his car, approached the driver's window, and asked for his license and registration. Meanwhile, Albuquerque police officer Danny Anzo was patrolling the area when he saw the scene and suspected that something was not right. So he decided to pull up behind Wysinski's car to check out and see what was going on. On. I, I know I'm under equipped. Do you have an idea with you? I mean, this is this is all I got. I mean, like I said, I'm under I'm under equipped. I was just heading over there to the courthouse. To the courthouse for what? to get my crap. Wisinski maintained his story that he's an officer with the sheriff's office and that he had pulled over the driver for going beyond the limit. I know it makes no sense. I caught him going 120 down I-40. Why do you have lights on this vehicle? Personal. I, I know. Do you have an ID with you at all? No, I keep back my uniform. Okay. What's your name? Uh, Brendan Wazinski. The officer then asked Wysinski to hang on for a moment while he ran a check on him, but while he waited to hear back from his office, he engaged Wisinski in some friendly conversation. And I'm not here to mess with you, man. It's just the thing is, yeah, he was speeding, dude. You could have called it in. And because if you get into shooting, you're right. All right, man. I, I understand. Right. It, it, this, for starters, I know this looks really bad. Right. This looks really bad. Notice how the officer never made him feel like he was not in trouble or anything. How long you been on? About three years. Okay. I've been on for like 13 years. All right. So, uh, I'm not saying I'm perfect, and I'm not saying that I've never done anything to, to, you know, against protocol, but. You need to be a little bit more careful, all right? The officer then requested a supervisor from the Bernalillo Sheriff's Office to come down to the scene, and then he puts Wisinski in the back of his cruiser. Do you have anything on you, man? Any weapons or anything? Okay. Um, that's fine. Just have a seat, all right? All right. Although this officer had tried so hard to make Wisinski feel at ease, Wisinski knew deep inside him that since he had already made it into the back of a police van, his next stop would be at the station, and he didn't want that. So he had a rethink and decided to come clean. What's up, man? All right. 
I'm just gonna be straight up honest with you. Okay. I'm not a cop. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm just gonna be. Where'd you get that badge from? I bought it offline. Offline. Okay. Do me a favor. Stay, stay in here, okay? For a second. The officer steps away to discuss the new development with the sergeant who had just arrived at the scene, and afterward, he decides to put Wazinski in cuffs. Hey, Brandon, step out of the vehicle for a second, man. Okay, face the vehicle. At this point right now, you are being under arrest. Do you understand? Okay. And that was the moment Wisinski knew he was done for. All right, Brandon, I'm just going to put on the seatbelt, okay? Wisinski was taken into police custody and charged with a misdemeanor of impersonating a police officer, which carries a maximum penalty of one year in jail and a $1,000 fine. Yeah, buddy. Can't be pretending to be a cop. Yeah, I know. I'm stupid. Lesson learned, right? However, when he appeared before the court, Wazinski took a no-contest plea and was sentenced to one year of probation and ordered to stay away from any law enforcement equipment or activities. I can't carry any firearms, deadly weapons, handcuffs, anything like that, because um, I do not want any kind of reoffense on this kind of um, case. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. The judge also ruled that he must undergo a psychiatrist evaluation within three weeks to determine the kind of counseling he needed at the time. Number four, Derry Wayne Lambert. On July 31, 2023, a 52-year-old Florida man, Gary Wayne Lambert, was driving his truck on the U.S. Highway 301 in Summerfield, Florida, when he decided to run a red light. He activated his lights and siren and zoomed past several cars that were waiting at the intersection. What he didn't know was that one of those cars belonged to an off-duty deputy from the Marion County Sheriff's Office, who was filling up his patrol car at a nearby gas station. The deputy was suspicious of Lambert's vehicle, because he had never heard that kind of siren before, and there were no emergency calls in the area that would require such a response, so he decided to follow Lambert and pull him over. When the deputy approached Lambert's truck, he immediately flashed a badge to the officer while wearing a cap branded Police U.S. Marshal. See your other hand for me? Where are you headed to? Okay, you have your driver's license on it? Lambert told the deputy that he was a U.S. Marshal from Texas and that he was responding to a gunfire incident in Marion Oaks, a nearby community. However, the deputy was not convinced by Lambert's story, so he contacted the U.S. Marshal liaison who interviewed Lambert over the phone. All right, go ahead. Sir, what is your name? Gary Lambert. Okay, what district do you work out of? I work out of Texas, but they got me down... They got me down in Florida right now, looking into uh, Marion Oaks. There's two gang member, two gangs out there that are riding on a four wheeler with a pole on it, busting into people's houses. With what he's saying and how he's saying it, even a three year old could tell that this guy is no U.S. Marshal. He basically repeated his claims of being a U.S. Marshal, but he couldn't answer basic questions that a real U.S. Marshal would know, like where he was assigned and what his current job assignment was. He also said that he normally just did raids and that he deactivated his lights and siren after he ran the red light because he was canceled from the call. All right, do me a favor, just go ahead and turn around for me. Yeah, put your hands behind your back. For what? I'll explain it to you. Lambert was arrested for impersonating a federal officer, but even while in cuffs, he maintained his claims of being a federal agent. Hey, how long you worked for the uh, U.S. Marshals? About three years. Three years? Okay. Personnel from the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office U.S. Marshal Liaison also responded to the scene to question Lambert in person. But when Lambert could not answer even his most basic question. What's your district? District. What do you mean? Well, we if, you're, headquarters the if you're a U.S. Marshal, you would know you're this one. That was when they confirmed that Lambert was impersonating a law enforcement officer. I know you're not a U.S. Marshal. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Right. I know for a fact, 100%, you are not with the U.S. Marshal. With enough seen and heard, Lambert was charged with false impersonation of a law enforcement officer, unlawful use of a badge, unlawful use of blue lights, and possession of a firearm and illegal pills while committing a felony. He was then taken to the Marion County Jail, where he was later indicted by a federal grand jury. He faced up to three years in prison for impersonating a U.S. Marshal, and up to ten years for possessing a firearm while doing so. Who among these cop impersonators do you think pulled off the most daring stunt? Please share your thoughts in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching. Until next time, stay safe.